Welcome to the studio with Paul Shearer. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the studio with Paul Shearer. Today, today's episode, I am joined by my old friend Robert McCourt, Hello. who was a pivotal member of um, our social circle growing up, and was like the first person to show me any bass riffs on the bass guitar set in motion. My whole uh, my whole life as a musician, in some ways, mate. Do you know what I mean? Oh, that's right. Remember and, that? Aye. I remember it well, mate. And then also, on top of that, after being um, impacted by the pandemic, Robert went out and completely retrained um, in computer programming and cryptocurrencies to set himself up for the future, which I think is a... Well, with the development of AI and robotics and the way the impact that's going to have on jobs for normal people, everybody's going to have to get comfortable with the idea of retraining and getting into new fields. And I think you've been a fantastic example of that, mate. So thanks very much for coming in for a conversation. It's great to have you here. Hi, uh, good to be here. Thank. Nice to see you. We're not up here very often, so um, it's nice to see you get a wee podcast on the go. And I thought. You know what? I'll come down and if there's anything I can do to help some people. Oh, mate, that's, that's a, great. That's that's totally it, mate. I think especially when it comes to like, like we could talk music all day, but especially when it comes to like cryptocurrencies and that, and helping like the average listener who doesn't know anything about that world. Sure. Get get ready. How like how do they get into that? What is it for a start? What is cryptocurrency? Why is it better than normal currency? How do people get into it? Is it is a safe side of gambling on cryptocurrencies or is it or is it all risk? What how does a how does the normal punt approach these kind of things, mate? Well cryptocurrency is is a way to enable transferring wealth peer to peer without the need of banks. So what what banks do is they take your money or currency and they will they'll have a ledger there for it and they obviously say this and that's going here, there and everywhere but effectively all they're doing is they're taking your wages every week and they skin 10% off of that from themselves and they loan out the rest of it to everyone else as a credit system. So what we're finding now is, you know, there's not really any means to like wh- wh- where's the safety net if the bank goes under you know what happens to your money there's nothing oh, we saw greece and like for example greece at the for the last financial crisis south like, america argentina um venezuela and stuff like that just yeah, it's, now, it's, right? it's there's nothing there really to stop them taking your funds at your hard-earned money and i know that i know it's like you can go to the court and this and that and it's all pretty above board and Really, if they really want to do that, there's nothing you can do about it at all. So yeah. cryptocurrency is a way... To safeguard against that. <laughs> it's a hedge against it. So if you're... If, if if I can go... I mean, it's not... I'll go back a little bit, right? So you had gold, obviously, was a way to transfer monetary value, right? So if, even back in the, the Roman days, so what happened with gold? when they had to, What happened when they had to try and fund their wars? They had to... They, they obviously, they couldn't cap gold around the countries, man. Do you know what I mean? It's too heavy. So it's a good store of value, right? We've got that. It's not a good way to transport it. It's open to skimming as well, isn't it? You know, they've done that. Like yeah. People would skim a wee shaving off the that's bottom how, of the coins. That's, and... how they, that's how they combated inflation. First of all, they used to chop bits of gold from the gold bars or whatever the coins, sorry. But to fund a war, it's like, well, we'd rather just... This was this was the birth of the fiat monetary fiat system. Currencies, fiat right. currencies. Yep, yep. 
where it's which is so for people listening, a fiat currency is what you, is pounds, dollars, Aye. the actual money that was in normal circulation just Aye. now is which is classed as a fiat currency. Right? So 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 fiat effectively is a bit of paper that just says I owe you. Yeah, it, it's, it's not the it actual it's wealth. Not, it's, it's not even not, worth anything, man. Totally, yeah, yeah. Not get any value at all. It's just an I owe you promissory note. I think that's exactly. It, yep. You read the original dollar bills, and it actually says that if you read them. That says, I promise to pay the bearer on demand, bearer all some that stuff. Ah, yeah. Shit. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so we go back to the banks then, right? So the banks are obviously moving digital digi- digital currencies around in terms of like it, it. There's nothing. It's just fucking little specks of dust, really. Yeah, it's so just going right. Okay, so that's a credit and a debit for something. But it just all exists. It's just on like in a computer. computer it's just screens, back, yeah, back, yeah. back. There's nothing really physically there. But crypto, though, you've Think of crypto as your your own bank. Yeah. Therefore, you've got more responsibility to deal with it. Yeah. Instead of like you leaving know, it in the hands of. Oh yep, no, yep. man! I've 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 spent you know somebody scammed me five hundred pound, man, and fucking I need to go to the bank and complain, and you're you're in a mad battle for about three months trying to get your five hundred pound back, but you've done it on a credit card, so you're all good, aren't you? But you know, just just fucking take responsibility, of your own mm. funds in, and be your own bank. So you're like it's if you're kind of falling victim to the credit system that the banks profit off of, and that's the when everybody talks about the bankers sh- and that. Sure, that's yeah. So, so getting involved in cryptocurrencies is a way to take responsibility for that and actually protect yourself in some ways against the yeah against exactly. that. Right? So I mean, like what I was saying before, so I kind of went off track a little bit there, but <laughs> a peer to peer system, on right? <laughs> Bitcoin was created after the two thousand and six financial crash, right? A, 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 an unnamed Satoshi. alias called Satoshi Nakamoto airdropped a white paper to some of the most cleverest software developers in the whole of Silicon Valley and the rest of the world and just went, I have solved or I have created a way to transfer monetary value peer-to-peer without the need of a bank. And what peer-to-peer means, if you don't know, if you remember Napster back in the day and LimeWire and all that, File you, sharing sites. Yep, right, yep. so you don't need the middleman. You just go, if I've uploaded the song, somebody else can peer it from me yep. and transfer it over. Yep, yep. So therefore, you don't need that middle thing. So you eliminate the bank if you become a peer-to-peer network. Yeah. So therefore, if I go, I'm going to send Tank one BTC Bitcoin, then all I need is his address, and I'll go into how it does it in a minute, but Technically, I can just send Tank the one Bitcoin. And it gets confirmed, sent, job done. Now, when I say about take your own responsibility, you do need to take your own responsibility because you if you put the act- wrong address yeah, in, yeah, you have to you're not te- getting it back. Technically do all that yourself. Yes. Yep, so that's so, why so if you fuck it up, that's on you. The only way of getting it back is if you know the person you've sent it to and you ask them kindly to send it back. <laughs> Which I suppose is not like, Something that happens yeah, very go. often in the real world that if somebody does make that mistake. Well, I've done it myself, actually, but I know the people. <laughs> you create wallets, right? And, you know, you can send it to the so wrong this is, wallet. This and is go, part of the discussion. Like, people, yeah. the people who don't know anything about crypto are probably even a bit put off by the idea of I need to create a wallet. What exactly? Scared, what I, does that mean in normal so, terms? So you know what I mean? If you've got, um, so, so if you think about it like a bank, right? The bank is the blockchain. Now, but cryptocurrency runs on software or a network called blockchain technology, right? Now, blockchain, if it really is an open, it's an open ledger. Uh, it's literally that you can go on and look at the transactions. I think it's transparent. Yeah, complete transparency, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you can check it all out. You can just, like, if you can query what's happened on the blockchain from day one. So the theory is, or not theory, it's a fact. What's happened on blockchain? The thing about blockchain is, it's happened. The history's there. You cannot hide it. You cannot yep. change that history. Once that transaction was sent, they ain't removing it from the blockchain. It's on there to be seen from everybody. And everybody's wallet is public. Uh, yes, the address is public, but the name tied to the wallet isn't. But public. the info and the the info in that everything is, is to public. Do with it. Uh, everything, uh, everything, everything, the balances, what coins were in the wallet, where they've went to, where they've came from, everything is all public. So when people say, oh, but cryptocurrency is kind of related to drugs, it's related to criminal activity. See, if you were a criminal, right, 
Blockchain's like, that's, a, like, this is an interesting cri- point. Criminal, cri- blockchain's probably the worst place to go and do criminal you, activity. Because you can literally see uh, all Where of it the all transactions. Goes. Right, it's like, a fucking stupid place to do it, to be honest. You do you do hear that, but and uh, obviously I think like this, yeah, the co- Silk Road and stuff like that was oh, part of that. Do you know what yeah, I mean? So Silk Road was created by Ross Ulbricht, right? Who I f- find him amazing, the lad, what he was doing, but I think he got he just got, got a grip of him, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, get Aye, up he just got you know, try to like a lot of people try see to assassinate like a people and all that. You know, like, like, no, but he was like, he found a way to sort of do online eBay and or whatever you call it. But Bitcoin just made the world go round. Do you know what I mean? It made sense, but uh, it sort of it sort of did well for Bitcoin actually because it made a use case for it in the in the early days. You know, when Bitcoin was like three hundred, four hundred dollars, but then it just rocketed to like six grand back then. So let me just go back a wee second, bit just before we get away from this. So see, w- w- so like for remember, we're getting into the the nitty gritty and the details of the the history of Bitcoin here, which is super interesting. But for keeping it relatable for people, I think that what is a if somebody's got a wallet, right? It's a digital folder that acts as the holder for your your cryptocurrency, right? How and how the, if somebody wants to go and make one of them up, how do they do that? So there's different wallets. You got to think of um safety first of all. Now you can have a there's two wallets you can get right. There's a cold storage and a and a, and a hot wallet. The cold storage means that you can store your keys. The wallet is the keys to the blockchain. It's not actually storing the coins. The blockchain stores the coins. The wallet is the keys to get access to these coins. Right, right, okay. Now, the the link to your wallet via um at, at like it's like a kind of address hash. Um, so when you've connected your wallet, it just sort of knows, right? That's your balance on the blockchain. Yep. So to speak. Uh, so a cold storage is effectively you plug a USB cold storage wallet in to the World Wide Web. Yep. And you can do some transactions, and, and then, then you can, can unplug it. Yeah, and that's it. And, 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 and unless yep. someone gets your physically gets your wallet, cold storage wallet, there's no way they can do anything about it. Yeah, yep. you can't be hacked. A, a hot wallet is is um is a wallet online basically. It's it's part like, of the um, application. Like where your, like your apps that you would get. Um, what's the one I I've even used before? We've spoke about um. Some of the ones Crypto. that I've shown and like ah, all these yeah, kind so of the, things. These are, are these are these are um yes exactly these are applications that uh, Crypto.com has a wallet, mate. I've just used that as an example. That there, is there a is wallet. Set, there's several options Aye. like that available. So, so there is if, if if a normal like retailer newbie, we call them newbies. So I mean, if they want to come on and like you know get started, it's like yeah, Crypto.com is a great place to buy crypto safely. You know, yeah. so it's well versed. It's well audited. Do you yeah, know what I mean? It's yeah, a good, aye. good place that to go. These are reliable places aye. to start. I've used this it kind for of years. Yep, My yep. missus Jade's used it for years. It's brilliant. You know, there's been no flaws in it, and there's other places as well. You know, Coinbase, another one, man. It's kind of regulated by the U.S. government as well, man. Do you know what I mean? It's like they're going nowhere. They've so know, that's kind of around. starting to blur the lines as well, isn't it? When you're talking about unregulation <laughs> and transparency, and but when you when you're talking about these these platforms then they are tied into the legal system they are tied into be, the mate. banks and it needs to be because well, i think it lends a, it, it lends a credibility as well like it, it, it's not like a pure fringe thing if you want mass ad um, adoption. mass adoption and, and i believe that's kind of we're going to need help it, from know? the banks mate no doubt about it because if you're normal like bob and alice who just don't really fucking want to know anything about crypto bob you and know alice. they're like <laughs> they just want to just want to send some money to their fucking grand wins and we're living in a digital world, right? Fair enough. They don't want to know what blockchain is. They're I don't know that level. They're a bit cool. later on in life where, yeah. you know, maybe in their 30s, they would have took time to learn stuff and, you know, blah, 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 blah. But they just want an application that works. Now, for me, it's it's all a UX. It's improving the UX experience for global ado- adoption. What's the UX experience? User experience. User right? experience. So yeah. it's, once we improve that, then, you know, People say like, look at the way Amazon and Google. Well, who who said like the when the internet first came out? Who thought that you know you would have bet your money on AOL and you would have bet your money on things like that? But Yahoo who, and stuff exactly. Like who would have known that Amazon and Google 
where the application layer had come out who took Everton or the market cap from Everton totally, and yeah. wiped it all out. And they were that big at the butt. They ended up being their own providers yeah, of their yeah, own yeah, servers. Yeah, yeah. But they, they rocked it, obviously, and then they were able to then completely... Exactly. So you look at it like that. So, so what I'm saying is, what we need to do is with crypto, and it will happen eventually, is what we're working towards at Cosmos is we're building the UX so who is Co level. Cosmos is who you work with just now? Aye, Cosmos is who I contribute to. There's a there's a blockchain on there called Juno as well. So I'll go into Cosmos in a minute. But what we do is we're we're um making the UX a lot better for users. Right. So it's easy for like Bob and Alice to come up and go, Do you know what, man? I've just sent value, I've sent some tokens from UK here to Saudi Arabia and there was no interbank charges, there was no delay there was no yep, yep. swift transaction yep, yep. taking forever it was within 30 seconds it was there now i can do that with ten dollars or i can do that with ten billion dollars yep, yep. and it happens the same way mate so if you're gonna like bet on the, the houses that this technology is going to be the future yeah you would say that because look at anybody trying to shift you know you know how much it costs to shift a, a, a ton of gold somewhere you know, if you were to send three billion dollars worth of gold from China to America, it cost you six million to ship it. To ship that, right, and yeah. it, uh, that's, if the, that that's if the fucking gold actually is there in the first place that you own. You, you know, you could own it, and you don't even know it's physically there. Yeah, so yeah. who knows? But Bitcoin, I can send ten billion dollars worth of Bitcoin instant straight to somebody in, in America or anywhere in the world for ten dollars. Yep. And that's like a flat, flat rate kind of thing. Like you, yeah, it's just, it depends how busy the blockchain is, how much transactions are going on at a time because the miners have to process the transactions. Now that piggybacks us into the next sort of subject of how blockchain works. Mm -hmm. the, but please go on, tell us. So, it, yeah. so Bitcoin runs on a, a proof of work system, right? A proof of work blockchain system where it's physical servers and miners, mining machines who are just working out a computer algorithm every 10 minutes they're all battling to who's going to be the one that solves the problem to unlock the block and f and figure out the code for it right and then whoever does that gets rewarded in bitcoin yeah and once they verify that block actually existed and happened the new block gets mined next to it and that's hence why it's blockchain because it's chained it's together chaining of blocks and it's kind of in thing real that... time every so... 10 minutes a new block happens on bitcoin network so like, it's a wee, that's getting into a kind of complicated region. So we need to try and simplify that a tiny wee bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, because like so, because when you're talking about the blocks and the miners and that, that's getting mm. into territory where I'm sure some people are like, yeah, I mean, it's I, like it's, no idea think about it this way, right? Here, so you know, if you've like, got, you know, you know, like if you've got like ten people, right? Ten people, ten people are there, and you all come to consensus on something that happened to you. You've all witnessed it together, right? But if only one of you are trying to say it didn't happen, you've got nine others who are saying say it, it did happen. Yep, yep. So what's the consensus of that situation? That it happened. It happened, uh, right? So you've got miners. So that's the validation all around, process. Yeah, yep, uh, right. they, they're just mining. The, they, they're trying to break down the algorithm. Now, it's it's. I am not that technical. It can get right into the oh, actual sure buildings they, uh, of this uh, and the code of it. But yeah. it, it's, it's to a point where it would take some quantum machine rigged up to like crack this to like be able to get ahead of it yep. and, and dismantle it yep. but if that kind of computer power existed then the blockchain would just upgrade to the quantum machine anyway ah, and therefore and would, it would be yeah, even yeah, harder yeah, to yeah, crack yeah. so it's yeah. like so let me just get this straight right so you've got a, <coughs> a transaction takes place right yes and that transaction is validated by the miners yes mate so that so with that, the transaction takes place and they then battle to, to see who wins who solves the sol algorithm yeah right to, who solves a complex mathematical puzzle yeah to prove that that actually yeah, exists exactly now when that's proven that that exists that miner is rewarded yeah in bitcoin but also the two people have had a validated transaction it's gone through and it's all now that there's a complete record yeah. of yeah. all that it's it's completely transparent exactly. it, it's very complicated but I, i'm i think i'm understanding I, 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 I just, i'm not gonna like like you even i'm still like i'm sure mate like it's uh, like getting into the actual 
the fault tolerance and all sorts of critical stuff that goes on in there. I'm still only getting to, to grips with things now, seeing it from a different, like a kind of software engineer's kind of yep, side yep. of things. But in a nutshell, it takes some confirmations to confirm that, and it's not only one transaction, there could be thousands of I'm transactions just, aye, that aye, come aye, in. Aye, aye, they go into a thing called a mempool, and all these transactions with different fees, the higher the fee, the miners are more interested in it aye. because it's more reward for the fees. Yep, yep. So there's all sorts of different variables that are going on in there as well. But ineffectively, what happens is you get maybe nine confirmations that happen for you. You send a transaction, you get about nine confirmations. The transaction goes through. The block has been hashed. It's been finalized. And there's a new block being mined. So the block number rises up by one. Right. Effectively. And so so how how does that... Are you um, like taking phone calls during podcast time? Typical, uh, typical. That's my next podcast guest just uh, contacting us. <laughs> oh, no, I know. I'm, I'm definitely here. Um, <laughs> aye, that's. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with that. Um, <clears throat> sorry, where were we there? We were talking about the just as the block's been finalised and we move on to the next block. Right, aye. So that, aye. so, so that kind of that's it's understandable the the process that's going on there, right? Yeah. But what does what do you think mass adoption in the future of Bitcoin looks like? Right, we're moving on to mass adoption. Yes, yeah, so I mean mass adoption, we're gonna need we're gonna need um as I say, the UX needs to improve massively. People are like struggling to uh get get their head wrapped around like sending a transaction. And you know, I think one of the, the guys who worked with us from California, Jack, he's like a, an amazing engineer man. He slapped a heart rate monitor on his mum and um, turned around and went like that. Uh, right, okay, so I want you to send this Bitcoin over to this address. And he watched her heart rate, like, whack up to, like, 140 BPM because she was like, what the fuck is my date? You know, I can't, you know, panicking. That's no good, man, do you no. know what I mean? We need that improved. So, you know, but also... Some people will no agree with me on this, but I believe we need that little bit of centralization as well. We need sort of banks to kind of, and that's what I believe is happening, right? The banks will be telling you to stay away from Bitcoin. It's no safe. I mean, JP Morgan was saying this fucking five years ago. He was, Jamie Dimon was going on and on saying, if anybody trades Bitcoin in my company, they're getting sacked. Well, look at them now, five years later, they're buying it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, they, they'll be telling you one thing and doing the complete opposite. Because it benefits. Because they're trying to acquire Bitcoin. all the Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah, yeah. There's only 21 million it can be ever in existence with Bitcoin. Right, so that's what I was going to ask you a minute ago as well when Aye. we were talking about the mining. Sorry, just to get back, back slightly there. Mm. Um, so there's 21 million that can Bit be Bitcoin, mined. right? And so they have, so when these blocks are being mined, Rewards are so coming. The rewards are coming, right? But that's going to come to an end. <clears throat> yes, exactly. So so you've got what you call that's issuance. Bitcoin issuance over time was set to go over 11 years is to release 21 million Bitcoins on the over issuance, which is inflated over a certain percentage over every year, right? So each, every four years, sorry, there's a halving that happens. Yep. Where the halving will then reduce the rewards by half or I'm not quite sure that the exact, exact figure of it, right. but it brings the inflation down, so that it stops inflating more rewards effectively, and um, therefore we're in, we're coming up to we we had a halving two years ago there, which triggered the the, the most recent bull run, and um, there's one more left. So after this one, it happens in 2024. All 21 mil billion, uh, sorry, all 21 million bitcoins will be on the market. Yep. So what's happening now with these banks is they're trying to buy it all up. So they're dumping the market. They're dumping the price of it. They're putting fear in the world. That's right, so probably that, why you're seeing a load so of macro shit going yeah. on the now. All macro markets, everything in the world right now is all like, you know, a fucking global pandemic coming out. What better way to put fear in the world than war and a pandemic mm -hmm. than telling people to stay in your house, don't fucking go out, we'll hit you with all these stimulus checks, we'll look after you. So, yeah, Soundy puts, let's say, 17 trillion into the market. What they're doing now, they're trying to get that 17 trillion back off the market mm -hmm. by selling bonds, dumping all sorts of, like, nobody wants to buy bonds. It's like we're selling, selling, selling now. The markets are all going down. It's so 
confluent, man, with the way Bitcoin halving's coming up in the 2024 is the way I see it. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing it all aligning mm -hmm. for the bull run of fucking bull runs that's coming. And we did have quite a tasty one there, to be honest with you, but a lot of people were tricked into this, like, ah, it's going to half a million, it's going to this and that. But, I mean, I believed it was going higher than $69,000, to be fair. Mm -hmm. But it did, not But you reckon it's still, it you're, you're still on the belief, it's built the but mindset that it will, though. you got to think about it this way, man, right? See, when you've only got 21, now there's like, how many millionaires is there in the world? I'm not sure. I'm right, not there's, sure. there's a million millionaires, right? <laughs> there's only 21 million Bitcoin available. Aye. Think about that for a minute. <laughs> They're all going to want a Bitcoin, it's, aren't they? Can I ask you another question as well? It's just kind of in, it's stuck in my mind for, for what you were saying previous. So, um, like after the the last Bitcoin is mined, what? How? How, is, how do the rewards occur? Or well, how do? Yes. They, how are the transactions yes. validated? Uh, the miners still validate the network, yeah, but okay. the, the, what you're seeing with miners will earn enough from the fees alone. With Bitcoin, because what will happen is when the price of Bitcoin rises, the fees obviously are worth more. So you, although you won't get any rewards, the miners will dump the rewards eventually, and then we'll see a buy up, and then the fees of the network alone will make you incentivized to keep mining Bitcoin. Hence why America's like, and why Elon's sort of involved in it as well. Now don't let him bullshit you by the way he's he's fucking he's he's so, going to be the man well, who's going to deal with the power well, of power uh, on these mining farms very soon and it, and it will come out eventually i don't i don't know i know enough about the crypto side of things but i've <clears> I, I love what elon musk's doing for the world already with the companies that he already owns Aye, you know but what he's, I mean? a, he's a he's a market manipulator man no there's, doubt. Th there's absolutely no doubt about that but it doesn't even, it, there's a, a there's a how many thousand market manipulators that are not doing anything good for the rest of the world Aye, you, you know, know what i mean get not, listen like, I, I like yeah. elon right i do like him but what i you know what i what i, what I do know is um speculation obviously but he's he's uh <laughs> it makes sense to me that america it's funny how China just banned it, right? And then it's like they've just gave up everything and opened the door to America to turn around and go, yeah, we'll do it. We'll set up mining farms. But, you know, Elon, like, announced Bitcoin. He was going to, like, you, you could buy Tesla with Bitcoin. And it pumped the price up for 40K to about 69K in a matter of three days. Yeah. And then it was like, wow, okay, we're going to the moon. And, you know, all that kind of shit. And then it's like, well, that's when you kind of start thinking to take some profits. Um, but anyway, no, I'm a long-term kind of guy. I don't, you know. Well, it seems like he, when that. it comes to the cryptos and that, he's a long-term kind of guy as oh, well. He believes you know it. I mean? Listen, there's a good chance he has Satoshi Nakamoto. Ah, well, I was, I was going to ask you about that, but I didn't know if I was getting into thing, he, Elon chance. fanboy territory there. Do you know what I mean? I, <laughs> do you know what I mean? He might be. You know, he writes in C++. Bitcoin's wrote in C++. He, he invented PayPal, you know. It's just like, it's like I think he was. A, I think he probably knows who he was. I if he was directly involved. And then there's Adam back as well, a British guy, man, who's very interesting. I think I, I I've seen that guy. He He's, says he is. Is that the guy that says he is? No, no, it's no. I'm not saying. In fact, is that an American dude that says that he he actually claims to be? There's no many people. Is that, it not the same name as that fucking guy at bought Rangers? I don't know. Something white. Greg White. I think it's the same know. name as him. I can't believe I even remembered that, to be honest. You know what I mean? so, anyway. Yeah. Well, I, I would say, like, regardless of what people's feelings are, he's definitely done a lot to like, lend credibility and validate the whole idea of cryptocurrency. I know, you know he's a big I mean? believer in it. He, do, he does like it. He's, I think he's anti... I don't... I, I really... I can't engage these yanks, mate. It's like... Elon might be just part of the whole big thing, man. It, they're trying to, like, you know, he's dangerous or whatever, you know. Because the stuff he's doing, man, he, he's got away with it. That John McAfee get fucking assassinated for, man. Do you know what I mean? It's like, so what, some of the stuff he's doing is I, like... I don't know all the details of the John McAfee story. If you, we feel, well, obviously, we don't, wild. Need, we don't need to spend too long on it, but if you don't mind... Wild John McAfee, you know who McAfee's security was, secu don't you? Uh, so, security software. Guru. So he he was like doing the same, man. He he, he was pumping shit coins, man. Now shit coin, you say if it's not Bitcoin, it's called a shit coin, right? And then so he was pumping <laughs> is shit that, coins. Is that a saying? I, I don't, I've not heard it, that. He he was um <laughs> he was he was pumping shit coins for ages, just saying, 
this is going to be the next fucking thing. It's got the best tech stack, fucking right. But he was using influence so to for people pump listening prices. That don't, that don't know shit coins. Sorry to interrupt you, yeah. mate. For people that don't know shit coins, would be things like Ethereum. The, I, I think I think apart everything. from Bitcoin is a shit coin. So I thought it, I thought it was shit coins was like the Shiba Shiba Inu coin and all that that he was Dogecoin you, 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 and all people that. People kind of who stuff. believe in Bitcoin, you've got Bitcoin maximalists who just and. You know, they've got a point, but I'm not a Bitcoin max list me. I, I believe that Bitcoin needs an application layer built on top. You can't build applications on the Bitcoin network. It's not powerful enough. You can't run fucking web applications off it. It just can't be done. The block size is not big enough. You'd be sitting there waiting four days for a block to be confirmed or something to transact. It's just not quick enough. Whereas like, but Cosmos, what? what some of the lead devs at Cosmos have designed Cosmos is, is they wanted to build an application layer for Bitcoin. So Bitcoin can then feed that. What all we do is we just make consensus on what we've done on our chain, and then the header of that will feed into the consensus of the Bitcoin network and get security off of that. So can you not use, is it, I mean, I might be, if I'm picking up this wrong here, forgive me, but you, can Bitcoin not be used on Cosmos? <laughs> totally, right. It's like trying so to, you can, it's right, trying okay. to walk into a fucking foreign country and speak English. Right, uh, that's, like that's what that's you're the, saying. We yeah. don't, it's like, hey, I'm trying to fucking send money this way, but so I don't know Cosmos, what you're saying to me. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah, no, that's no, that. totally. It's not compatible, I get you, mate, yeah. right? So if we're looking at, like, Cosmos, is Cosmos what you would describe, that's a blockchain? Cosmos is a, a is is a different design altogether. But but it is it's, it is, it it is, is but no yeah you're right it's blockchain but but Cosmos is like but Cosmos is a total different thing. It's they believe in a thesis of interoperability. Blockchains talking to other blockchains. Yeah. So we created a the thing way called, for it, just to keep us on the same track. Right. The way that the the kind of like regulated wallets they can all can you can send between them and that that's Aye, them mate. that but means they can no, communicate no, with each no other can... like no other blockchain out there can do what cosmos does now cosmos is a is, is a hub right with other blockchains spun off of it created by Co cosmos right 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 and because there's a, a, a technology stack in it called ibc it's easy for us to send so I have Tank blockchain built on Cosmos and I have Curity blockchain built on Cosmos and I've got Jade blockchain built on Cosmos, right? So I can send tokens, tokens meaning coins. But, uh, co yeah, wealth, but right? Currencies, so each yep. blockchain will have its own token. To it, It's for governance. It's for monetary value. It's for rewarding people who are building stuff on the network. Yeah, That's yeah. how it works. It's the same way that the Bitcoin validators and miners are rewarded for validating transactions and, using and, Bitcoin. And the asset is Bitcoin, yep, right? Yep, yep. It's monies. That's what it is, and it's monies. Aye. So I can, with IBC, I can send Curity coin to tank chain. Right, <laughs> so I get you. Can, yeah, I cannot I, do that when like, Ethereum can't do that. Bitcoin can't do that. But Cosmos is like, now everybody's starting to look at Cosmos and go, fucking hell, they've got this thing called IBC. Can we implement that on our chains? Of course so you can. Is, is it more the, is it like the decentralized networks that you're, that are trying to like uh, integrate with Bitcoin now because of the regulation that's taking place with that? So we, we look at centralization, we look at, we look at centralized entities and say, Exchanges like Binance. That's the phrase like that, right? I was looking for earlier. Right, I couldn't got, think about that. Uh, that these are these are these, are these are these are these are centralized entities yep, yep, that yep. Are, are controlled by one f fault can happen and it's fucked. That's centralization. Decentralization is it's like trying to shut down Bitcoin would mean you would have to tear down the internet. It's quite decentralized. Yep, yep. Cosmos is it, it, it's more of um think of. I'll go. But I like a, a political fucking reference, right? But think of Cosmos as a as a um as a as a country with sovereign states. Right. Each sovereign state has its own chain. Yeah, like a U, like a EU. Yeah. Or something like that. NATO, yeah, like, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. NATO. Anybody gets like fucked on a country with NATO, they all come to its rescue. Yep. Cosmos is a bit like that, man. We have our own little like state where we can build our own blockchain. There's loads of applications built on that. Cool. If what if that if that chain happens to fuck up, it doesn't affect the rest of them. But if if we want to get like 
if we want to get security from the other chains, we can do. We can use their validators and miners and stuff like that, and it's just all interoperable yep, that yep, way. Yep, yep. It's a little bit different, Cosmos, but it is the the way it's built by the creators of what we're called Ethan Buckman and and Jay Jay Kwan that created them. Um, they had this from day one. They had this thought. The 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 future of blockchain technology will be we are building the next internet. I guess that's one, what that, is. What, that, that one, totally, no, that makes a lot of sense. There, there is one question that I'm still a bit confused about is if I'm using a normal kind of exchange or a wallet from, like, I can have both Bitcoin and Ethereum. Yes, because we are a centralised exchange, they buy the liquidity. So they have to buy the coins to store it on their exchange, otherwise yep. they couldn't store it. Or Therefore, they just, they buy the tokens and store it and they, they actually have all the nodes running. Mm-hmm. The nodes meaning it's the blockchain running in the background, so it actually talks to it. But they just buy the tokens and they store them as liquidity. Right. So they do have a sort of an order book. Then if somebody buys something, there's got to be a seller at the other end of that but, order. So, but what you are doing is you are more than the, the background, but <laughs> creating the stuff aye, that we, the normal people will be using in the end. I see. So, so like, I mean, we might as well talk about a smart contract because that's what changed the game. Bitcoin well, tell us so, what a smart so contract. Bit, Bitcoin. Isn't it? Bitcoin was just simple monetary store of value it didn't really do anything it was just a way to like hedge against inflation that was what it was designed for it was to stop like we had that financial crash like you know bitcoin was created for that reason to combat that right. to stop you know you look at the british pound just recently plummeted 30 percent yeah it was almost it was actually one to one with the dollar thanks there at very one much point. the new prime minister for that you know what i mean Aye. Aye, so but thank it's no hard doings, it's the people above, you know that. Don't she, we? That's a, she made an absolute choice, oh. her and her uh, yeah. chancellor made a financial decision a few weeks back. It's that it caused the, the value of the pound to plummet, 30%, yeah. But it's not, you know it's not I mean? her, it's 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 the people <laughs> above her that are telling her this is what you're in power today. You're a puppet, you can, you're just doing what you're told. You can, I, I, I get that, but there's, there's only you can go as conspiratorial as you want, right? But, ah, yeah, but, it's all like but she's the she's side. the customer Fair service enough. representative of that group, and she's the person that's got to take the blame for what's happened. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's, um, but um, why? Well, so, getting into the politics back, there, but, oh, but, fuck that. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to uh, get back to crypto. Back to, get back to crypto. So smart contract was in was like so Bitcoin did that okay that's what it was combated to do it does it really well it is the gold the digital gold think about it that way but it's better at sending around the world it's more transparent so we've got that going for it it's not been around longer that's about the only thing I'd say it's not as good with Bitcoin as as with gold but everything else it ticks all the boxes man people say it's volatile it fucking listen I. I call that bullshit, right? Because if you look at Bitcoin where it was two years hot ago, take, hot take. it was sitting at eleven thousand dollars, right? It was sitting at eleven thousand dollars and two years ago Bitcoin was at eleven thousand dollars. Right. And then the pandemic kicked in and the all the stimulus checks happened and all the grants happened. So they doubled I think they inflated the, the currency by fifty percent. Now Bitcoin, but people say, yeah, but it fell, it fell from sixty nine grand and it's at twenty k. Yeah, it did, but it's still doing what it's meant to be doing. It's double from what two, it was two, two years year ago. ago. Yeah, yeah. You're still up. Yep. So Bitcoin's doing exactly what and it's meant to be doing. And that's just talking to the people that got in on it two years ago. There's people that have saw ten thousand percent increase in the value exactly. of what Bitcoin was. You know, so. Bitcoin's a hundred percent year on year out up. Mm-hmm. And when you add an in inflation to that calculation, inflation's coming in at eleven percent every year at the moment. So if you can sit there with a hundred grand cash pension, you're a fucking idiot because you should be putting that into something like it's got more of monetary value, like Bitcoin, for instance. Because you're on hundred grand cash, my friend, is devaluing eleven percent every year. Mm-hmm. It's not the prices in the shops that are going up. It's the price of the currency. It's dropping. Mm-hmm. It's and, that people and while, don't realise that. While that's I mean? happening to your pension, year on year, Bitcoin is 100% Aye, And then on top you know of that, that, this year, you get the pound just fell 30%. So you're doing 50% this year already by holding cash. Mm-hmm. Whereas Bitcoin might have plummeted from $69,000 to 20 k That was an 87% drop. You're still up. 
you're not totally mate. No, I mean, when you look at it like that, it does make a lot of sense. You know, there's a, I suppose there's a, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, people who, like, I think that's part of the reason I wanted to have this conversation with you, mate, because Aye. there's a lot of people that are so detached from the internet and the, the stuff that comes naturally to most days now, like that. It, it could be helpful for them to hear this, you know. No, I, listen, and I'm sorry if I'm going on in a waffle, man. But <laughs> I'm not just at all, like, no, I've got like two, no, 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 three no, years no, no, of information no. just like no, rammed no, in here, and I'm no, like, and I'm working with people who are on at, at, at like the level so far ahead of me as well. So I'm still catching up with them. But totally, mate. No. Th- th- this is something that I mean, I run a, I, I run a, a thing called a validator, which we effectively, right? So Bitcoin runs on proof of work network, right? What we all run on is a different design called proof of stake, mm. where it's miners. You don't have to get build big mining machines and host a massive unit in Texas somewhere Aye. and run about seventy five thousand ASIC miners Aye. that cost about ten grand each. You don't have to do that with proof of stake. You need delegators who delegate their coins to your validator. That's where you get the rewards from this time. So and they're using their, they're the using their own coins to like, Aye, back so, a transaction. Yeah, so we, you know we I mean? run instead of having like I mean I can run my, one of my validators has three cloud servers hooked in together. Now they're all like it's called a remote signer, right? So you, you design it as a cluster, so it's so hard to kinda of hack. You can't just like go into my server and go, there's my fucking keys. Yep, yep. There's all the, the, the whole everything everybody's delegate is like emptied, yep, right? Yep. There's a cluster set up where to get into one, it's mirrored. It's like there's a there's a fake server so there. You're saying you're like you're saying to get into your network, there's all these different kind of distractions. Aye, it's, it's remote and... signing, it's virtually very difficult, man. And and then the keys that do the transactions are being transferred and randomly see, across when, each server. When you say you're when you're talking about this and like you have a network set up uh, like within your own computer kind of thing, like aye, you aye. set that up just aye. like in your house kind of thing, you don't need to have a big it, server room and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. So, so people at proof of stake networks don't have to have what you call bare metal in the house. It's it's in the cloud, cloud infrastructure. Now you would say it can be centralized because what happens if the data center goes out in Germany or yep. in America, then yeah, of course it's pros and cons, but on the flip side of that, bare metal, you might have a power outage in your house. Totally, or the price of fuel could you, sk- Or could your internet sk- dies. Or the price of electricity skyrockets, Aye, you know what I mean? Or your internet like, gets yeah. plumbed out or whatever, you know. Yeah, so yeah, the, yeah. there's pros and cons of everything. But that's why you've got, you know, in Cosmos, we generally have 150 validators secure in each chain. So if one goes down, you have got enough consensus to keep the chain going. So what happens if all validators stop and then the chain just halts, mate? The network stops. So this right. is why it's important for job for validators to keep their system secure and keep it up to scratch. And so what is that is that <clears throat> what you was that would you say that's what you've retrained into? I had to like learn the, how to build and, and run a validator what, you, and maintain it. Before before the pandemic you were working you were touring with bands, you were Aye. setting up stages, Jerry Cinnamon, Gregory Porter, to, like a few of the It was one of there, the like, it was the, it was that night when I was actually on a gig with Jerry. And it was the day Juno launched on Cosmos. And it was like, I had a fucking laptop at Monitor World watching the chain ready to start. And I missed the fucking Genesis block because something happened on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to work I two jobs at one time there. <laughs> I just completely missed the fucking first few blocks. Quite a bad thing now that I look back on it, but I didn't realise that at the time. Because... Mm-hmm. The gig was more important, obviously. Mm-hmm. It's something that was an issue Priorities, on stage. Priorities, that's it, you know. Yeah, like it was you. an issue on stage. But that's when I made the decision, like, I'm not doing two of these at the same time, man. It's yeah. either one or the other. Tell us about what that was like, Curtie, because I think it's really important. Well, it kind of got a bit are, of a chip in my shoulder, man, with the music industry tank. Because see, when I went back, everything changed, man. Give, us a, give us a wee more of an de- in-depth outline of what you've done. First, it worked like you're setting up stages, running desks. Like, tell us about that. So, I was a systems tech, went I? Eventually, I got into being a systems tech, something I trained built for, yourself, for five years. Build your, built yourself up, five years to college of like, you know, coiling cables from day one, coiling cables in a warehouse, right up to fucking being a system tech for like, yeah, last gig with Jerry Cinnamon, man. Although I wasn't a system tech on that, I was monitor, I was monitor tech for it, or yeah. control tech, they call that. Yep, yep. But then the guy just going and plumbing all the desks in front of the house. And, and monitor world so making uh, it all talk to each other and then going handing it over to the, their 
the actual their engineer, team. Their, their team. Uh, yeah, going, yeah, right. So that's the, a good system. The that's two, all working. The, 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 the artist's cool. actual sound team kind of Aye, thing at that but, point. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so you went on tour then because you were, if we put you, nothing of that could be plugged in and set up. They needed Aye. that person there to sort yep, of. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and that was, it was a good career, man. But yeah, so after COVID, there was no gigs. Nothing happened. Well, I know. I mean, obviously, I know. What was the danger? Like, I was out delivering fucking Amazon parcels for six months, going aye, where they aye, arguing, aye, arguing aye. with neighbours. Going, what's this? I need to get out of this. Um, and I and that's 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 the real interesting thing about it because as much as like the the music life has went back for some folk, we we like automation and AI and that it's going to become more and more important that people are aware that retraining is going to be a factor of the future. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think what we do need though is that's that's a good point. I do get it, but we need engineers to build the UX first. That UX is so important, man. It's like you're not going to adopt. Nobody gives a flying fuck about blockchain or what's going on in the background. They just want to hang your fucking work, work aye, right? Aye. They just want a good UX experience. But that's go, good though, mate. Brilliant. Because see, like that. Yeah, yeah. But that, yeah. mate, that's good though. Like because you've got like, uh, not only have you trained yourself to be able to work in that field, you've also spotted a niche in the market that's going to be the like probably your area of of focus. Do you know what I mean? But what was it like to have to retrain? How did you did you have to like get books? Did you have to do any courses? Um, what did no, I had to, like, for the retrain, I had to, well, I, my friend from Germany, uh, Tobias Swatch, lovely guy, man, legend, I owe him quite a lot, actually, he runs one of the biggest validators in the whole industry, man, huge fucking income they've got, and um, he's, like, I first dabbled in it while I was sort of sound engineering, I was reading up in Cosmos, I'm going, that's fucking interesting, I love that shit, I'd love to run a validator, man, that's cool, and then it's, um, so I turned around and, and, and tried and dabble with it, and I was like, I could not even know my way around the command command line interface. I couldn't even fucking know how to open a file. Yep, yep. Like, no, I ever do that with the black screen command. I wouldn't CLI. have a clue, no. Like, I know what you mean, but I don't have a clue about that I don't even, know how, to, either, I don't even know. know how to look into a folder at so, the time. So that's part of what I want to get to, and mate. That's, like, like, interesting, you know, how you so, cope so, with so that. So Tosh I mean? really had to hold my hand all the way through this, man. Do you know what I mean? But then I was working on this Windows machine at the time, and he's like, he was telling me the commands from a Mac engineer's point of view. That's how good he is. He's going, right, so, you know, I'll be able to try and tell you what it would be on Windows, slightly different, but try this, try that. And it's like, some of it's working, so just getting really hard work. And I gave up, and back to the, kind of went back to music, I think, a bit for a while, and then, and then COVID kicked in, and it was like, no other choice. Go and do some parcels, get some money in, and just, what I, I needed some, a stream of income basically and then um and then i went oh, i talked to my friend leon um a good fucking brother of mine as well lives in spain um he's he's sort of went you'd be good at this man you know what i mean and he was right in on it he was buying coins at fucking stupid cheap prices and reading into the the backgrounds of it all and he actually knew more than me at the time and uh and i just wanted to people man it just sort of kind of delved into it and got really into it and uh and then i went back to tosh and said right you know i'm going to give us a go again man and i'm going to try and build this validator it's like don't run a main net validator run a test net and fuck it up break it and because at least it's not a real thing it won't cost you money all right so yeah i did that but we got it it will it, it stopped me and said right i know you're serious now because you've come back and he says, sell that fucking Windows machine straight away and buy this Mac. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be the best investment you ever make. And I went, right, okay. Uh, I did that. And I, it was like all the commands he was telling me were just working. Aye. Everything was just coming in. And then, yeah, just stuck at it, man. And yeah, so so for that kind of field, the, the workflow, the Mac helps the workflow, you know. That's aye, that's, definitely, yeah. man. It's because, it's because we run most of our stuff on Linux systems. Yep. And Mac is built on Linux. So oh, right, it right, kind of just right. works right, straight right. away. Whereas Windows is a world of its own anyway. So it's really, I mean, you'd, you'd end up having to run a Linux virtual machine on a Windows machine anyway to make things work, which yep. is just fucking a pain in the ass. Yeah. Why totally. do it? Just, yeah, you can commit, miss a step out more efficient, mate, which makes a lot yeah, of sense. You exactly. Know? It makes a lot so of sense. then I got into that and I uh, built some, so, so the, 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 the name of the game is to be a, a, a decentralized dev in crypto is you've got to have a stream of income a validator gives you that but you've also got to engage with the community 
delegators need help, people like yourself, I try and, if I show you how to buy, like, Cosmos or buy Juno, then, you know, we can offer a percentage of you staking that Juno to our validators. Like, yep. we offer, like, 80% on Juno. So that's people your, like, fucking hell, so, man. So getting, that's a reward you get by investing we take, in Juno, we take, you know? Every validator, validators are incentivized to secure the chain by charging commission on top of delegators. Delegators are incentivized to delegate to the chain by seeing a, an APR percentage of extra tokens, which is going back to that Bitcoin reward thing yep, about yep. the inflation. Yep. Proof of stake networks are usually high inflated, so therefore it does a it really takes somebody a lot more cleverer than me to set these things up, man. Because you've got things like tokenomics where you've got to try and design the curve right of how many tokens are you going to inflate into your system. Yeah, are you going to inflate it too much where it just devalues your currency too low, and then like everybody just sells it, and it's like you end up having a token that's worth zero point zero 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 one cents. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Juno's done pretty well. It's like five dollars. But Juno was at like forty five dollars at one point. It was fucking huge. And Cosmos being the same. So the, the the tokenomics have designed pretty well. There's a nice fair reward for delegators who want to stake it and and they believe in the chain, believe what they're building. You know, it's amazing stuff that's so happening. What, 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 would you, what would you say to people then to know about <clears throat> crypto? Would you say people should get into crypto? What, how would they go about oh, man, that? 100%, like? man. It's like, why would you know, man? It's like, I, 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 there's, like a, there's a young, I'm not going to say names, but there's a, there's a young lad I know who would rather piss his money up against gambling. Then why gamble when you can just throw it into crypto then and mm. actually put it into staking and stuff like that and actually watch your wealth grow mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know absolutely obviously. i mean it seems like and, 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 and timing of the market now is brilliant because we're nearing a bottom now because we've you know we've been going down since fucking november last year mm -hmm. and you need that you do need it i uh, you need it like you this is the time when you should actually buy it up if you're going to oh, 100 right? man yeah yep. 100 percent. no it's like buying it now and just like chipping away man and there's a thing as well, I, I mean, obviously not financial advice here, right? But what I'm saying is, look up things like dollar cost averaging. That's like DCA in your position. Things like that means that you're buying it consistently over a year, every week, where the price might be down, it might be up, it might down, it might be up. It does that all the way through the year, but you've caught the knife pretty much pretty all the time because you've bought it every fucking week. Mm -hmm. You've always caught a low price. All right, you might have put. You might and then you're hoping bad. that the low prices even out against or, or make more yeah, than you'll, the. Yeah, you'll you'll be doing a lot better than going weeks, like that and yeah. trying to fucking put five grand on something yeah. and just like calling black. Yeah. Fifty yeah. percent chance it doesn't go your way. Yeah. And then these markets are really crafty, man. You need to be careful, man. They don't get into trading, man. For it, for whatever the fuck you do, just like if you, you think you're too risky, and be a just... trader, you're gonna get your ass slapped, yeah, man. I'm yeah. telling you, without a doubt. Yeah. Well, it's that is obviously one of these things. There's how many scams are out there trying to teach people. Well, I'll, I'll teach you to be the perfect trader. I'll do this. We'll do it. Do these people I mean? are but, just like making more money off of the the the, the buy bit adverts. Like we'll give you like <clears throat> there's a there's a guy called Bitboy, or there's like the Moon Carl. All these fucking YouTube cunts, man. I hate them, man. And they just go <laughs> like that, and and they and they bring in all these like rabbits to the lights man like oh my god you can make that money in that and they shaft them mm -hmm. it's terrible yeah, you all need yeah. up against the one shot these fuckers <laughs> man i'm telling you because they're doing no that's, good that's for our industry certainly they're scaring an extreme, people an extreme point of view there no, it's rid <laughs> ridiculous man i'm telling you it's like well, we shouldn't be doing it man but more fool you if you listen to them yeah yeah Get educated is your message on Definitely, that front. Man. Like, don't don't take don't anybody at face value. It, see learn. if you're sitting trying to judge, like buying something, <laughs> we're watching YouTubers, then you're already be beaten to the price, man. Yeah, well, if, if they've had the time to make a YouTube video and post them, one thing it, I learned, you've got to imagine early, things have changed since that time. Aye, do you know what I mean? Thing I, I mean, there's a couple of YouTube. See, like Ivan on Tech, he's someone you can watch because he's a software engineer himself. Mm. He actually knows the technology mm -hmm. so there's no bullshit with him he knows if it's a good project or not because he's you know i mean he did actually love cosmos for ages but then he was going on about like well where's the devs where's the devs and it's like well we've been fucking building for the past two years totally, totally. if you know what's what we've built it's like i was a bit like well, where have you been so what were anyway. you no no fair play mate that's a that's a fair point um, 
So what were you? You were in Colombia. Um, was in Medellin there. Yeah, you know, last um, week. You know, uh, there was a, we had our Cosmos conference. It was a big conference there called Cos Cosmoverse, and um, yeah, but the first Cosmoverse was held in Lisbon, um, and it was like four hundred people. And now we've just had one there in Medellin, and it was like fifteen hundred people Excellent. in a bear market. Brilliant. Man. It's just like there's so much buzz about Cosmos at the moment. It's quite exciting. But yeah, so Medellin, we met up with like there was. Listen, I've got like two sides of the story there with with, with Medellin because it, we had the mayor in of Medellin talking about how Medellin, sorry, I'll pronounce it right. Medellin <laughs> was was this Silicon Valley of South America, and, and it was like wow, big opening speech, big statements here. I'm going, this is fucking great, and uh, but then I got chatting with some locals as well and got right in deep to the city, and yeah, we're just hearing it's like they are the mafia, the government's like they do yeah. fuck all for us and this and that. So it's a bit of bit to learn knows. about that world. I, I suppose, am just as well, like, yeah. well, you know, South America needs help, man, and they need that. Um, like the 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 local currency, their um what they call cop uh, Colombian pesos. They they can't take the cash and get dollars for the cash. They're not allowed to do it. They're not allowed to exchange their cash for do US dollars. Not allowed, man. Why is that? It's probably because it risk of devaluing the cop or something like that. I don't know. But I found that astonishing, man. They're really struggling. So therefore, that means they can't buy anything from Amazon. They can't get anything from, from the, the internet. So I mean, who takes cop? I don't not know. many oh, people. Yeah, certainly don't or know, yeah, right. you can go and exchange it online, but you'll probably get hammered with an exchange rate for doing it. So it's like they're crying out for crypto, man. They need Bitcoin, but they can't buy Bitcoin. So no, that's a, that's a, anyway. But we need to do more episodes anyway. There's so much, mate. Well, on. mate, I would say absolutely, man. It's been a fantastic conversation, man. I think um, very informative, and a lot of the more complex stuff you were really good at explaining to me. We weren't yeah. supposed to go as technical, were we? But no, no. But it's like that's uh, as what it is. That is what it, well, I mean, but there's an area, a part of us you you can't not go technical. Yeah, it's, a, you, it's a technical field. Do you know aye, what I mean? Aye. But one thing I would like to leave it on for the day, Curtis, is what would you say to people who think they're too old to retrain, or they're too stupid to retrain, or they've not got enough money to retrain and enter a new field as an adult? What would you say to the people? But the, um, and you've got to be. You got to be into it, man. You can't like, you know, you need ambition. Don't find you? a find a thing first, and then you got to, you know, right you in. can't just jump. I've I've met so many people who are just like, I oh, want to do what you do, but they've not got a fucking clue, or they've never been into what I do in mm -hmm. the first place. So how can you tell somebody yeah. like I got into what I do because I love doing it, mm -hmm. right? That's kind of how I fell into things. I just get into stuff. Mm -hmm. If there's something that you've got, it could be a skill for anything. Crypto industry needs all sorts of skills mm -hmm. it could be lawyers it could be accountants it could be school teachers it could be any fucking form there's all sorts of skills needed in crypto because it is a digital version of the world that you're living in now there's skills needed from all aspects so if you've got like something you're good at you can probably bring it into blockchain man yeah. in some shape or form so it's a good area to go to if you're thinking about retraining or if you have to at some point blockchain, blockchain man, is the, the way to go should be reading up on it and do we start off with bitcoin man buy the what's that book that pick that good bitcoin book it's the ah oh, the, the bitcoin standard get it bought from amazon read about I, that. I think i've actually got that book, in my man. audible uh audible list now fantastic that you mentioned it, you book know. to get started with man hey yeah, that's great then no that's fantastic mate well as, thanks very much mate for this it's been brilliant having you and right. we will definitely we'll try and keep some sort of regular regularity so that we can uh, we can keep everybody who's listening updated on what's happening in the world of crypto. We might even get into some music chat next time as well. Eh? All good, man. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> no bother at all. Cheers, everybody. Thank you very much, folks, for listening. This has been The Studio with Paul Shearer. Welcome to The Studio with Paul Shearer.